Lord, I just got to thank you for all your mercy and grace you've given us, Lord. Uh, for my wife and I, just gotta, I just got to praise you and thank you, Lord, for all that. Uh, abiding with us, Lord. Uh, my wife's been going through a tough storm for, uh, we figured it out for about eight years. She's been going through this tough storm with her mom, Alzheimer's. And Lord, you, uh, you've just been merciful. You've been in the boat the entire time. Thank you so much for abiding with the, her through this storm. And, and uh, thank you for taking her mom to heaven. And uh, thank you that there's there's no Alzheimer's in heaven. There's no there's no surgeries in heaven. There's no hospital visits in he heaven. Just thank you so much that this world is not all there is. That we have uh, such wonderful things to look forward to. Thank you so much. Hear these praises from a grateful heart Each time I think of you, the praises start I love you so much Jesus, love you so much Lord, I love you my soul sings in your presence carried on your wings i love you so much jesus love you so much how my soul long Longs to worship you forever. Your power and majesty. I lift my hands. I lift my heart. I lift my voice. The heaven for you are my song and she Hear these praises, sing it to the Lord. Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises stop. I love you so much. Jesus, love you so much. Lord, I love you, my soul sings In your presence, carried on your wings I love you so much Jesus, I love you so much How my soul Longs for you, longs to worship you forever in your power and majesty. I lift my hands, I lift. 
that secret place under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you so much, Lord. 
Thank you for your comfort, help, and healing. Pray that, Lord, as we uh, dive into your word, Lord, that you just let your Holy Spirit keep flowing and give us ears to hear what you're trying to say to us through your word. We thank you so much that your word is an anchor. Your word is home base (laughs) in this world that's being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You, You keep us steady. We can cling to you, cling to your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone say it. Amen. Amen. So, uh, let's see. we got a holiday coming up. Uh, what's the holiday coming up? Well, it's Christmas. That's right. You know, Thanksgiving gets, gets overlooked, don't you think? I mean, it's like, wow. You know, we go straight from uh, Halloween to Christmas. We need to come up with some kind of lovable, lovable character for Thanksgiving. Like, I don't know, some some big turkey or something. No? There you go. I brought Susie to be our lovable. I thought, you know, maybe we could make like Mr. Magoo a mascot or something. When I was a little, little kid, every, Thursday, every uh, Thanksgiving morning they'd play Mr. Magoo cartoons. Do they do that anymore? I doubt it. I don't. I don't know if he's uh, politically correct anymore. Anyway, hey, we're going to dive into the word now. Uh, this is Joanne. Everybody say thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Joanne. She, she didn't. She didn't know anything I was going to throw at her today, and she just. She's such a trooper. And uh, so, uh, let's see. What am I doing? I think I'm done with this. Take off my retainer. And uh, I think we're just going to get going here. Uh, So, happy Thanksgiving. Did I say that? I don't think I've officially... Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I figure um, we're going to take a break from our study of the book of Acts. We've been going through the book of Acts very slowly, I might add. But um, we're going to take a break for a couple of weeks. Next week, we're going to be across the parking lot uh, having church with Christ Street Fellowship. We're going to do a combined service. And I think the Lord Jesus smiles on us when we do this, when we combine with other churches. And uh, it's going to be a great time. They asked me to speak. And uh, so I'm going to be doing the message. They're going to be doing the worship and everything. And... and uh, uh, I'm supposed to speak on. Let's see if I do it. It's going to be the the prophecies that lead up to Jesus's first advent, and uh, it's like, well, I don't know if I've ever approached Christmas like that. You know, just going over the prophecies, Old Testament prophecies. So, hi, Arla. How are you? Well, all of us are moving a little slow. It's good to see you. So. Um, so next week, if you come to this building, there'll be a little note on the door saying, turn around, walk across the parking lot, <laughs> and we'll have church with those guys. And then, um, and then after church next week, we're coming back to this building, and we're going to have a potluck next week, and then we're going to have a baby shower for somebody. Let's see. Who would that be? Who, who's had babies recently? Two of them, not just one. But two, and we see them over there, Eden and Ezra, right? Eden and Ezra, having twins. And look at at Hava, what a champ. She just, oh, you know, it's nothing. Just had a couple of babies, and I'm still at church, you know. Anybody who's watching this online and you're not at church, why can't you be like Hava? Look at yourselves. Anyway, but uh, yeah, it's so nice to have you guys. Anyway, next week, after church, we're coming back here and uh, having the potluck and the baby shower. And then uh, and then the following week, the Crandalls will be back. They're, they're going to Iowa to be with family for Thanksgiving. That's why we're doing the worship. Gene came out of retirement today. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. And uh, so, uh, but the Crandalls will be, will be back uh, by then. And uh, then uh, I wanted to save Acts 12 for them. 
because that's in Acts 12, one of the cool things that happens, King Herod Agrippa the first gets eaten by worms because he doesn't glorify the Lord. So I want to make sure the boys from the Crandall family are here to enjoy <laughs> King Herod getting eaten by worms. So, okay. Anyway. Yeah, that'll be on the 8th. Uh, so today's Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, uh, an 83-year-old lady that goes to Old Country Church. We have some Old Country people here tonight. And uh, it's nice to have you guys. And uh, Joanne is from Old Country as well. So, uh, but this is Kay. Kay sent me, and she sent, I think she sent it to a lot of people, but a kind of a Thanksgiving letter. And so I'm going to read some of her letter that she sent me. Uh, she says, Thanksgiving Day is a national holiday proclaimed in 1864 as a day set apart for the national giving of thanks unto God. This was enacted by President Abraham Lincoln. That's right. Yeah. Thanksgiving Day is a special time. This is Kay writing. Thanksgiving Day is a special time when we can give thanks to God for the many good things in our lives, our parents, family, friends, food, home, His love. Yes, God loves you so much that He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to shed His blood, die on the cross, to pay the price for your sins and for all mankind. Ask Him to come into your heart today to be your Savior and, your, and Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, Romans 10 13. Whoever you are, you can call upon the name of the Lord. And then, I'm not sure if Kay stole this quote from someone or if this is just her conclusions after many years of ministry. Her and her husband um, ministered to the Navajos uh, for many years. And uh, but she says this, and I th this is the reason I wanted to put it, put this up here for you. The pulse of prayer is praise. The heart of prayer is gratitude. The voice of prayer is obedience. The arm of prayer is service. Where there is faith, there is love. Where there is love, there is peace. Where there is peace, there is God. Where there is God, there is no need. Is that pretty cool or what? I'm not sure if that's her or if she's quoting somebody else, but I'm going to use it. But I'm going to give her credit. So so in my prayer time this week, you know, and Joanne, you can have a seat in a comfortable chair. Or are you comfortable there? Are you comfortable? She's not listening. That's okay. <laughs> in my prayer time this week, I was asking God, what should I share this week for to, just to help us celebrate Thanksgiving? And so I believe the Lord had me land on Psalm 91. And so we're going to take a look today at Psalm 91. And to read for us, I'm really blessed. I've got a lot of blessings today. I'm blessed to have my granddaughter, Livy, here. She's going to be doing our reading today. Are you ready? Are you going to read? How do you want to do this? you want to just read from there? Or how do you want to do this? I'm going to grab Jean's mic. It's ready to go. <laughs> You read from there. Oh, that's that's a good idea. You can you can do that. Everybody say hi, Livy. Thanks for reading, Livy. Okay. So, well, she hasn't done it yet. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, let's all stand for the reading of God's word, can we? I mean, you know, if you don't have twins in your arms, that is. All right, Livy. Whenever you're ready, huh? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide un under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the per perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes 
shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the, wait, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show my salvation. Lord, we just thank you for the, your word here. Give us ears to hear what you're trying to tell us through. There's so many things here that we could talk about. And uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for your protection, your presence, your provision. Thank you for uh, your reassurance that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. And so help us, Lord, as we uh, uh, look into this psalm, that you give us some, uh, maybe some secrets you'd want us to see about uh, uh, making sure uh, that we're dwelling in you, abiding in you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Joanne, you can have a seat out there. You don't have to sit up here. (laughs) Sit in a more comfortable chair. I didn't say the rest of you could sit down. No, you, you can't. I'm just kidding. Give me a hard time. So Psalm 91, um, uh, one of one of my guys at the at the mission where I worked for a long time, uh, he was a Marine. I, I made the mistake of calling him an ex-Marine, and um, he will he will correct you, right? Because once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine, even if you uh, you're just inactive, you know. But you're always a Marine. Anyway, uh, he was a Marine, and he told me, because uh, we were going over this psalm, and he said that uh, uh, when he was in Iraq, he was stationed in Iraq for quite a while, his uh, platoon leader would read this psalm out loud to all the guys right before they would go out and engage the enemy. I thought that was amazing, that they would read this psalm together out loud before they went into battle. There are several promises to cling to in this psalm when you're going into battle. And how many of you might be in a battle right now? How many feel like you might be in a little bit of a battle right now? Well, um, you're in the right psalm. The fact is, life is full of battles, isn't it? To go through life on this plane under the sun If we're trying to pretend that there's no battles, it's a fantasy world. If we're going through the Bible, if we're going to church and trying to find a life that has no battles, struggles, here in this temporary plane under the sun, it's a fantasy world. It doesn't exist. Life is full of struggle. Life is full of battles. Jesus even said it. He said, you know what? In this life, you shall have tribulation. You not, not you might. You shall, you shall have tribulation. But then he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so I think the key here in this psalm and in our lives, how can we hide ourselves in Jesus? Jesus overcomes the world. If we are in him, it's going to be good. God in his word, he never pretends that life does not have struggles. We will have storms. Turn to somebody and say, we will have storms. But be of good cheer. You might be in a storm, but you know what? Jesus is in your boat. I just want to make that clear. And he can stand up at any moment and say, peace be still, and the storm goes away. But sometimes you might be in the middle of a storm. So as we study Psalm 91, I'm just hoping that today we'll walk out these doors and we'll be thankful. Not only today, but the rest of the week, you'll probably be thankful that I'm done talking. But... 
<laughs> you might be thankful uh, that God in His Word, He gives us reassurance, He gives us His presence, He gives us His protection. So uh, how often have you, um, how many use the book of Psalms in your prayer time sometimes? Or you're having a really hard time, you know, and you're just flipping pages and you're just trying to find some comfort. Um, heard this from uh, one of my uh, professors a long time ago uh, in CPE, Clinical Pastoral Education. He said, you know, the rest of the Bible speaks to us, but the Psalms speak for us. If you don't know what to say to God, just find a psalm. Find a psalm that will help you say probably what you were hoping to say, right? Psalm 91, it breaks down like this. Uh, the first verse is the proclamation. In other words, the writer of this psalm, most believe that it's David, although the psalm does not have a heading or a title. Um, we, we believe it's David because he's talking about battle so much in here, about God being a refuge and a fortress. But uh, the psalmist, first of all, he sets forth a proclamation. In other words, uh, I know that in, in teaching, uh, my wife has told me this, that in the classroom, you're supposed to write on the board an objective. Is that what you're supposed to do? So you get up there. I mean, as the kids are entering the classroom, there's supposed to be an objective on the board. Verse 1 is that objective. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So whatever I say today is going to come back to this, because this is the objective. He who dwells in the, whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that's verse 1, that's the proclamation, that's the objective. This is the facts. These are the facts. Turn to somebody and say, this is the fact. Yeah. Verse 1 is the fact. Verse 2, the psalmist, more than likely David, he says that he's done it. Look at the word I. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. I've done it, guys. I've found that secret place. I've figured out how to dwell in Him. I can do it. And then, verses 3 through 13, he turns around and he says, you can do it too. You can do it too. You can get to that objective. You can learn how to dwell in the Lord, abide in the Lord, Him being your shelter. Abide in His shadow. Look at all the yous here. He shall deliver you, cover you. In His wings you shall take refuge. Uh, truth, his truth shall be your shield. You shall not be afraid. Right? A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. It shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see it. You, because you have made the Lord, the Lord who is your, my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. No plague will come near you. This is good stuff, right? He shall give his angels charge over you. Keep you in all your ways, right? In their hands they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. You shall trample underfoot. And so, uh, verses 3 through 13 is a message for us. You. <laughs> us. And then, this psalm is very interesting. In, in verses 14 through 16, it takes a turn. All of a sudden, God himself breaks into this psalm. The word psalm means song, and God just breaks in. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever been praying, and uh, in the middle of your prayer, God whispers an answer, and you're, He interrupts your prayer? Hang on, God. I'm trying to pray here. How many would welcome that? Any, yeah, anytime you want to, you know. There, there's been sometimes uh, I've been uh, praying for somebody and said, Lord, they, they really need some help with their rent or... You know, I'm thinking about some finances that they need help with, you know. Lord, they really need some help, you know. And usually when I go down that road, I usually hear his voice saying, Well, you give them some money. You do it. You go bring them some, whatever. Anyway, so, but, so in verses 14 through 16, God answers the prayer. He breaks into the psalm, breaks into the prayer. So we're going to see that today. 
So let's go back to verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Um, what's the best hiding place you've ever found? Your basement? Your backyard? Closet? Have you ever played, have you ever played hide and seek and you, you hid so well that they could not find you? They were about to call the police, you know, with a missing person's and finally, if they, oh, I'm right here. Don't call the police. You know, that's a good hiding place. And then uh, recently, my wife was telling me this. There was a there was a woman that was experiencing homelessness, and she um, had found a place, a hiding place, I guess. It was on the roof of a store, and it was behind their sign, and. Uh, she was there for several months. There was, a, there was an outlet there, an electrical outlet. She had her coffee pot going. She had her computer going. Uh, she had a heater, you know. And she was up there for several months behind this sign on the roof you know, of this store. And uh, eventually they found her. But that was a pretty good hiding place, would you say? I mean, several months, you know. And uh, she found a good hiding place. Well... He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The psalm is telling us, this psalm is telling us that the best place to hide, your best hiding place, is in God. He is the secret place. He is the Most High, the Almighty under whose shadow you can rest and be safe. So notice the words dwell and the word abide. Under this proclamation, all of the protection that's promised in this psalm, it depends on how well we dwell and abide in God. How well we consider Him to be our everything, our all in all. Now, there are many today, I, I see this all the time, um, they only take the name of Jesus on their lips when life's getting unmanageable. Do you know anybody like that? To them, God is kind of like an insurance policy. You know, God is like Jake with State Farm, right? I had an accident. I need your help, you know. But, uh, you know, they don't, they, don't call, they don't call Jake when they don't need him, right? They just call him when they need him. But, uh, but God doesn't want that to happen to us, right? God is so gracious. He still answers prayer like that. How many have experienced that? You've... Maybe you, you know, you weren't all in with the Lord a lot and, um, and, and you got into some trouble and offered up a prayer and God still answered the prayer. God is so gracious. He still does rescue people who treat him like this, who treat him like an insurance policy. But our Lord, he prefers that we dwell with him, that we abide with him. Uh, I discovered something here in the last couple of weeks here, uh, on Saturday mornings, I'm, I'm really blessed. I get to go do a uh, chapel or a church, really, at uh, Denver Cares Detox Center. So, pretty interesting deal on Saturday mornings. Anyway, we've been going through the New Testament, and we, got, we came up to John chapter 1. And uh, I have taught the book of John um, dozens of times. I ha I've lost count of how many times, not only have I read it, I've taught it. You know, and it's like, okay. So here we're in John chapter 1 again. And uh, I learned something. Turn to somebody and say, I'm amazed he learned something. So there's a lot of things. There's a whole bunch going on in John chapter 1, right? Towards the end of John chapter 1, John the Baptist, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then the next day he sees Jesus again and he says, Behold the Lamb of God. And so two of his disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, one is named Andrew, probably the other one is John. Oh. They hear John the Baptist say this, hey, behold the Lamb of God. And they start following him. They start following Jesus, walking behind him. And then Jesus turns around and he says, whom do you seek? Which is a great question to take to your journal. I encourage you to take that to your prayer closet. Whom do you seek or what do you seek? And, uh, and they say, well, Rabbi, where are you staying? That's all they say. Rabbi, where are you staying? And then Jesus says, come and see. Come and see. And so they, 
They came and they saw where he was staying and remained with him that day, abided with him that day, dwelled with him that day. It doesn't say Jesus did any teaching. It doesn't say Jesus did any miracles, anything like that. These two disciples of John the Baptist, one is Andrew, we know. I think the other one's John. They just hung out with Jesus. They just hung out with him. And then the next day, Andrew goes and finds his brother Peter and says, Hey, we found the Messiah. So just hanging out with Jesus, he figured out he's the Messiah. I don't think we spend enough time hanging out with Jesus. I don't think we spend enough time dwelling with him, just wanting to be with him. Lord, where are you staying? Lord, where are you? Where can I, what can I do to get to where you are and just dwell with you and hang with you? Jesus said in John 15, he said, uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Yeah. It's like, it, it should be no, maybe, maybe it's not big news to you. <laughs> uh, so we've got to learn how, we got to learn, Lord, how do we learn to just hang out with you, dwell with you, abide with you? Lord Jesus, how do we learn this? And, and I, I'm just saying this, if we want the level of protection that we're talking about in Psalm 91 here, uh, I, I think we're going to have to learn this. We're going to have to learn this dwelling, this abiding. A couple of cross-references, uh, if you go down to verse 9 in the text, um, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague uh, come near your dwelling. And you could also cross-reference uh, Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you think about what a shepherd does for a sheep. What do shepherds do? They care for them, they protect them, they feed them, they lead them. You know, and so... Abiding with the Lord and coming under His protection. And I thought, man, what could I compare this to? You know, if, if I keep coming out from under the Lord's protection, right? The Lord's got the umbrella, you know, over me. And He's trying to help me. And I'm like, I don't need your help. And I'm going to go out into the rain. Then I'm surprised that I get wet. <laughs> you know? Or even worse... Uh, I start shooting holes in the umbrella, right? Oh, I don't need you, you know, I can, I can do this, you know. And then we're all surprised we get wet, you know. But uh, there's a verse uh, I memorized a long time ago, and I'll put it up here in the NIV. A man's own folly ruins his life, yet his heart rages against the Lord. You know, if I come out from under the protection of my shepherd, if I come out from the protection of the Almighty, the Most High, is it any surprise that I'm going to get hurt? Right? Is it any, any surprise that arrows are going to be flying at me and they're going to hit me? So the psalmist is claiming in verse 2 that he's discovered. He's discovered, hey guys, I've discovered the secret. I want you to have the secret. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God and Him I will trust. So, the key words here, if you haven't figured it out already, dwell, abide, refuge, uses the word fortress. And so I decided to put a picture. That's, uh, that's Bent's Fort. Down in Bent, no, Los Animas. Los Animas, Colorado. You can go down and I think it's a replica. Is it a replica or is it the original? This is the real place. They rebuilt it a little bit. You know, well, you know, to keep the Indians from attacking, right? But let's say that the Lord is our fort, right? You got to stay in the fort if you want protection. What if I say, well, okay, well, thanks Lord for the fort, but you know, you know, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to take my chances outside the wall. You know, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to get some arrows, you know, things are not going to go well for me. So I don't want to just attempt to use the Lord. 
when I need Him, you know, emergency situations. I want to learn how to abide with Him. Um, I, uh, <laughs> when I first started doing street ministry a long time ago on East Colfax, uh, there were some strange characters. Uh, one guy, he, he was a street minister too. And uh, I was uh, kind of tagging along with him one night. I was only 18, you know, just five years ago. And, uh, yeah, it's a long time ago. Anyway, but I was taking along with this guy, and he said, uh, well, he got into an argument with a guy. And, and, I'm, and I'm just standing back kind of watching this argument, you know, and it's like, I don't know if I can argue with people, you know. I'm, I don't think I have that much scriptural knowledge to argue with people. But, uh, and finally, the guy tells this uh, evangelist, he says, man, Jesus to you is just a crutch. And without batting an eye, this street evangelist says, Jesus is not just my crutch, he's my whole hospital. <laughs> in other words, you don't go to Jesus just in emergency situations. He's the whole thing, man. He's the roof, he's the foundation, he's the operating room, he's everything. And so I think that's what this means to dwell or abide in Jesus, to abide in God. Psalm 46.10 be still and know that I am God. And I, I do think it, it takes that stillness, that quietness. When we were praying before uh, church today, Gene, you mentioned that. Just finding that quiet voice, that still small voice. And um, there is a thing you need to do in addition to your devotion time. I don't know if you guys have heard this. Uh, this is from uh, Bible college a long time ago. But in addition to your devotion time, you're supposed to have a contemplation time. Are you aware of that? Contemplation time is when you set the Bible aside and you actually you keep it near you, have a notebook ready, and you say, well, Lord, what would you like to say to me? And you have a quiet time, and he, he may not say anything, but he might. And so contemplation time is just learning, practicing the presence of God, dwelling with him, abiding with him. And then going on with verse 3, this is the you's, where the you kick in. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Now, I'm not going to cover every single thing in this psalm, but um, I, I do want to stop right here and just talk about the snare of the fowler. And a snare is a very vicious weapon. Matter of fact, snares are outlawed in most states of the United States. You can't use a snare to trap wildlife. And so the snare of the fowler, who do you think is the fowler in our lives? Satan, definitely. Yeah, Satan, he has these snares, right? And if you think about a bird getting caught in a snare, and so the snare grabs or grasps the bird's uh, legs, one of the bird's legs. And so the bird tries to fly, he can go up 18 inches or so, and then he has to come back down. And how, how horrifying that would be. Here's the bird. He knows he can fly. He can see the sky. And yet every time he tries to go up, this snare brings him back down. He can't get anywhere. You ever feel like that? And so I thought I'd throw up uh, several things can be a snare to us. Addictions, lust. Self-righteousness, I think that's a big snare for a lot of people. Self-religious uh, activity. Unforgiveness is a big snare. I know a lot of people just persist in their unforgiveness of others. Uh, riches. Riches, uh, having money, that kind of thing can be a snare. It can drag you back down to the ground. You try to fly, pulls you back down. Being afraid of what people think is a big snare. That's actually identified in Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man, the fear of people, brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. And so there's a lot of snares of the fowler. Satan has so many weapons at his disposal, doesn't he? You know, sometimes I wonder that uh, the arrows that Satan shoots at me, I think a lot of times I've given him the arrows. <laughs> I didn't mean to. But anyway, uh, I don't know if we're here to confess things. but And then uh, the psalmist goes on in verse 4. It's almost like he's, okay, speaking of birds. Speaking of birds, let me tell you, 
He shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you shall take refuge. And so under the wings, you know, Jesus wept over Jerusalem and he, he cried out. He said, how I've longed to take you under my wings as a mother hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. And how often have we been stiff necked like that? God's tried to gather us to himself. He's tried to teach us how to dwell with him, abide with him, hang out with him, be still and know that he is God. And we're like, I'm too busy. I got things. I got, I got to go. I got things going on. And we push him away. The Lord Jesus has been trying to comfort you. He's been trying to console you. He's been trying to take you under his wings, but you refuse. You're stiff necked. These promises that we're leading, reading here in Psalm 91, the promises of protection, they only apply to those willing to rest under his shelter, dwell in his care. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. And so a buckler, I found this, <laughs> If you, most Bibles, if they have a little uh, reference there, it'll say that a buckler is a shield. And it's like, well, why didn't they say your shield and shield? <laughs> Turns out what a buckler is, is it's a shield that they would sling over their back. And so it'd be a shield for your back. And so you'd be holding a shield in the front and you'd have a buckler and a spare shield, I guess. I guess if you lose this shield, you can whip that one around. But this one will keep the arrows out of your back. Huh? It'll help you against backstabbers. Right? And so the Lord is our shield, blocking the arrows coming at you from the front, and He's our buckler. And it says, His truth, His truth does this. You know, today, truth is very subjective. Right? You've got your truth and I've got my truth. Well, let's just agree to disagree. Well, if you're disagreeing with God, you're going to have a hard time after you die. One out of every one person dies. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Find that out. You probably could have figured that out. There's lots of things being touted as truth these days, but it's His truth that provides both of these shields, the front shield, the back shield. Protection from arrows and protection from backstabbers. You're going to need that. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. You shall not be afraid. That's the main theme of this psalm. You shall not be afraid. Even though there's storms going on around, a lot of things you could be afraid about, a lot of things wanting to cause fear, and the psalmist is saying... I've discovered this dwelling place where you don't need to be afraid. In the shelter, the shadow of the Almighty under his wings, let the threats be launched. Let the arrows be launched. Let the arrows fly. I'm safe in his shadow, his fort. Got to stay in his fort. Turn to somebody and say, stay in his fort. Stay under his care. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eye, only with your eyes, you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. And uh, I got to st- I got to tell you, I have stood at the windows of the church. The Lord has blessed me to be part of a couple of churches here. So blessed to be part of this church and uh, try to be the pastor and teaching elder and everything, you know. And But uh, I stand and I look out the window of this church that God has built for me. And I, I have watched so many people who have called themselves Christians, people that I know. And they have fallen to the lies of the current culture. They have fallen to current or new cults. Satan is the father of lies and he keeps spinning yarns of doctrine that many are falling into. Uh, The woke movement, the LGBTQIA and the gender confusion doctrines, the CRT doctrines, things that would have never been an issue 20 years ago are now under scrutiny of people who have deemed themselves better judges than God. Verse 9, Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. There are several plagues that have come upon the church. 
And uh, if we are dwelling in the Lord, if we are hiding ourselves in the Lord, those plagues will not come near us. We'll be able to discern what's going on. Discernment is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, by the way. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Operate in that with that gift of discernment. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And uh, uh, if, we're, if this is David writing this, and you think about a soldier in David's era, uh, they probably had sandals. How frustrating it would be to be going out to war and stub your toe on a stone. Yeah. Oh, who put this stone here? You think? But the angels are there to bear you up. Angels are cool. Turn to somebody and say, angels are cool. They are so cool. Uh, angels, uh, are they not ministering spirits? Yeah, there we go. Hebrews 1. Are they not ministering spirits? Sent forth the minister for those who will inherit salvation. He shall give his angels charge over you. And so, uh, angels, uh, this is, uh, you've probably heard uh, gar about guardian angels. This is one of the places, Hebrews chapter 1, where we get the idea, and Psalm 91, we get the idea of guardian angels, that each human being is given a guardian angel. And uh, it's like, okay, well, I, I can go with that. Of course, it talks about uh, the angel is there for those who will inherit salvation. It's like, okay, for those who are seeking the Lord, so okay. But uh, I, think, I think there's angels. I know there's angels. And uh, they're watching over you. Now, this portion of Scripture here, uh, he shall give his angels charge over thee, over thee, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Uh, this is the portion of Scripture that somebody used against Jesus. Who was that? Satan did, yeah. So, uh, Satan is tempting Jesus. Pick it up in Matthew 4 here. But uh, Satan is tempting Jesus. Satan takes one of the temptations. Satan takes Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple and tells him to throw himself down. Right? Throw yourself down because it is written. And then he quotes the scripture. Right? If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And then what Jesus does, and what we all need to learn how to do, he ba Jesus balances Scripture with Scripture. Jesus says, It is also written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So he balanced Psalm 91 with Deuteronomy. And so we need to learn how to do that. We need to have the whole counsel of God. We need to have the whole sword of the Spirit and balance these things because there's people that are taking uh, scriptures out of context and running to the end of the highway with them. <laughs> and it's like, wow, man, you need to really balance that out. And so Satan knows the Bible. How many know that? Satan knows the Bible. And so he uses this against Jesus. And uh, it demonstrates how Scripture can be twisted for selfish purposes. But the psalmist here, he wants God's people to understand how he cares for them, not how they can manipulate God to do their bidding. And that's not what we're doing here. We're not trying to figure out a better way to get God to do something for us. That's not what we're doing here. We are figuring out, Lord, how can I dwell with you better? How can I abide with you better? Verse 13, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. And Jesus says this in Luke 10, 19. Uh, well, and also in uh, Mark 16, he says, if you take up any deadly snake, it won't hurt you, you know. And so, uh, you know, just for application purposes today, I did bring my box of snakes. So, at the end of service today, we're going to practice a little snake handling. No, I don't have a box of snakes. 
I wouldn't bring them if I did. And I wouldn't tempt the Lord like that. Anyway, but Jesus says, hey, this is Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so trampling. And so what I love about the Lord Jesus and his word, notice that God in his word acknowledges the fact that this world has snakes. This world has scorpions. This world has every evil thing to thwart God's purposes in your heart and in your mind. That's a fact. As long as we exist on this plane under the sun, there will be battles. I'm glad the Bible is brutally honest. I'm glad Jesus told us about scorpions and snakes. I'm glad he told us about the authority we did have to trample them. But the fact is they're there. Then, like I said earlier, this psalm in verse 14 through 16, it, it takes a turn. And all of a sudden, God starts talking. He starts singing, if you will, because the word song, psalm means song. I wonder if God sang this part to David or whoever's writing it. You know, wouldn't that be great? And the, the psalmist is just going along and he's trying to prove he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's trying to prove that. In the midst of exalting the Lord's strength and presence and protection, God shows up. I think if we could get to the point of truly offering up selfless prayers, truly offering up selfless praises, I think God shows up. I think God responds. And uh, verse 14 here, uh, and we're wrapping it up here. And then we got communion to do so. Uh, because he has set his love upon me. Very interesting phrase. Because he has set his love upon me. The word set has to do with foundations. Bradley, foundations. You know what? Are you going to build a house without a foundation? No. You're going to have a good, solid foundation. He who has set his love upon me. And so your love is on the foundation of the Lord. The Lord Jesus, you've set your love upon him. It's a firm foundation. And then the word love, it means deep longing for God or a clinging to God. It means to cling to him. Um, I, I think I've shared this before, but a few years ago, I got to go to Africa, Zambia, Africa. And I was just blown away by the people there, how much they clung to the Lord. I, I've been trying to figure out how to describe it. I wish I could package that and bring it back to the United States because most of us in the United States we think Jesus is just another option we don't cling to him like they do they clung to Jesus they didn't have any distractions they didn't have the distraction of of riches and things like that they clung to him and so that's what this means make sure that you're setting your love you're clinging to Jesus that it's a firm foundation He's everything. You know, Jesus uh, asked Peter in uh, John 21, he asked him the same question three times. They're on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus says, Simon, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? Do we deeply long for Jesus? Do we love him? Do we cling to him? Knowing that there is no true safety apart from him. Because he has set his love upon me, uh, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And his salvation has so many layers. Um, not only sa saving us for eternal purposes, but saving us for temporary things and uh, to, to go out in his name. So uh, here's my conclusion. When we are done with self, trying to save ourselves, trying to exalt ourselves, trying to make ourselves feel better, using God, trying to feel better about ourselves, as soon as we're done with that, God shows up and he answers prayers. He breaks into our prayers. When we are done attempting to manipulate God to get him to do our bidding, when we honestly rest in everything he is and everything he has provided, then we hear from him 
and he speaks to us, and he protects us, and he shows us these layers of salvation. All we have to do, have you ever been caught in a violent thunderstorm? You ever been caught? I mean, even if you're in your house sometimes, you know, man, a violent thunderstorm, thunder and lightning and everything. If you're outside, you're, man, all you got to do is get caught in one violent thunderstorm and you realize how powerless you truly are, how powerless you are to control anything. Or to control anyone. Powerless. To do anything about anything. Only God can do these things. We are safe only in Him. He has the power. So we realize that He is the foundation. And we set our love upon Him. And at the same time we realize that He's the roof too. He's the fort. He is everything. We hide ourselves in Him. We dwell in Him. We abide in Him. He's the refuge. He's the fortress. So let Satan throw his night terrors at us. Let Satan and his minions launch arrows at our hearts and at our backs. We have no strength other than Jesus. We have no answers other than Jesus. We have no hiding place other than Jesus. He surrounds us with songs of deliverance. He is our fortress. He is our refuge. Have you found that secret place where you can dwell with Him all the time? Be at rest and be the most thankful. Amen? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I always love that psalm. What can man do to me? What's interesting about Psalm 118, traditionally Psalm 118 is the psalm that the Jews would sing uh, at... um, uh, Passover at the Passover supper we're about to have communion and you think about Jesus singing this right before going out to the garden of Gethsemane being arrested and beaten and tortured and hung on a cross and he's singing this the Lord is on my side I will not fear what can man do unto me you don't think bad things can happen they can Bad things can happen, but you know, if the Lord is with you, what can man really do unto me? If the Lord is your shield and your buckler, he's your fort, he's your foundation, what can they really do? They may kill the body, but they're not going to get to this. They're not going to get to what belongs to the Lord, you know. So, uh, I got a song here for you. Big surprise. I always have songs. But, uh, and I can just take this over here. And oh, it's going to be it's going to be that song. Uh, I wrote this. Uh, actually, I wrote this after um, that uh, guy at the mission, the Marine. He told me that his battalion leader would uh, read this psalm out loud before they went into went into battle. So. Let's get ready to go into battle here. And we're going to let the arrows fly. I will not fear the terror that haunts me at night I will not fear the arrows that fly at me by day Lord you cover me with your mighty wings your mighty wings a thousand may fall at my right hand ten thousand may fall at my left hand but it will not come near me oh it will not come near me let the arrows fly let the arrows fly 
deliver him because he calls on me I will answer him I will show him my salvation show him my salvation let the arrows fly let the arrows fly The arrows fall, watch the arrows fall, you are my shield, you are my shield. pray that you help each one of us, Lord, just to discover that, that secret place, that hiding place in you, to dwell in you, to hang out with you, and to do nothing without you. So uh, help us, Lord, in that. Bless us as we take communion now, and uh, thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken. We can hide ourselves in the cleft of the rock, and so, Lord, you are the rock of ages, cleft for us. We can hide ourselves in you. Bless this, Lord, as we continue. So we're going to do communion. As I sing this song, this Rock of Ages, and uh, you got the remote, um, Rock of Ages, as I sing this song, just come up and grab the elements. And uh, Glenn, you may have to help some, some people if they want it. If you want to come grab the elements by yourself and then just hold the elements and then we'll we'll do uh, we'll partake together so sing this as you're gathering your elements rock of ages cleft for me let me hide hide myself in thee let the water and the blood 
Thank you so much, Lord, for your sacrifice that you made. I need to get my elements. Or did you do that for me? This, this is my help meet here. Come on up here. Did you get your elements? Okay. So, all right. On the same night in which he was betrayed, I always uh, think about how even though Jesus was betrayed, he had to hurts of being betrayed his heart had been pierced by someone betraying him he still followed through with his father's will same night he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me and so we're going to break the bread we're going to partake of the bread together And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's partake of the cup.
Lord, I thank you so much for being the rock of ages that was cleft for us. We can hide ourselves in the cleft of the rock. You are our hiding place. You are the Almighty. You are God Most High. And in the shelter of your arms, we can dwell and learn how to hang out with you. And no matter what the enemy throws at us, we'll still have a peace that passes all understanding. We'll still have a joy unsearchable in our hearts and minds. Lord, keep us going. Thank you so much for this time of year, this Thanksgiving. Lord, help us, Lord, to uh, continue to give you praise and thanks every day. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone say, Amen. Okay. We have a children's lesson being brought to you by Barbara and, and Katie.